Hello and welcome to Brundle's Basement. I'm your host Dave and this is the I Only Old School Review podcast recorded in a mad scientist basement. I love post-apocalyptic fiction, whether it be books, movies, games or a reoccurring nightmare. Like thousands of us, I find the idea of a destroyed world or a crumbling society fascinating to the point where I've brought this book as a present. And it's on this long journey through the wastelands I came across the film we're about to talk about. So sit back, grab a drink, it will be okay, we'll get through it together. Today, we are watching Fred's. It was the decade of mullet styling, shoulder pad wearing, strike attending and massive mobile phone using. We look back at the 80s with retro tinted glasses, but this was also the decade of great unrest, which was partly fueled by the very possibility of a So it comes as no surprise that those creative types jumped on the prospect of headbutting the big bangay and in 1984, the BBC made the pseudo-documentary drama, Freds. Set in Sheffield, this is where we meet Ruth and Jimmy, who are planning to get married because they are having a baby. Sheffield is what you'd expect in the 1980s. Peas are on the cooker, tea's in the pot, and football is being talked about. Meanwhile, there is an escalating kerfuffle between the Soviet Union and the US in Iran. Life plods on back in Sheffield, Allotments, supermarkets and points in the pub. An official discusses tinned corned beef and Jimmy turns out to be a bit of a shit. All this is played out with cleverly placed radio news broadcasts in the background. Shouty shouty chanty chanty protests are staged. Prices in shops are hiked as people panic by. Neighbours flee to the countryside. And because it's the 80s, a strike turns into a riot. Because you've got to get fair pay for that approaching apocalypse. The news has now turned to a public address system, informing us on what to do in an airstrike and how long a dead body can stay in a fallout shelter before it needs to be moved. A group of officials are sent to a bunker and people start building makeshift blast shelters using wooden doors. And then the sirens sound and it's time for the With a flash and a frozen scream, it goes from sipping ale and it's all grim up north to exploding buildings and burning faces. Families huddle in their shelters and the blast sweeps over. After the attack, the officials in the bunker struggle to regain communications and have to bin bag a body up. The fallout starts to fall. After a while, Ruth, with her unborn baby, decides to leave her family and her makeshift shelter and go looking for the now dead Jimmy. We get to see the destruction through the eyes of Ruth and we come to the stark realisation that modern media has lied to us and it's not all blue jumpsuits, slow motion headshots and drinking cola. Ruth comes across a makeshift hospital and just to rub radiated salt into our wounds, we are treated to a montage of nightmare fuel scenes. Days pass and looters are shot as they try to find food. Food has become the only viable currency. It is used to pay for work and we've held from those who don't. The more people who die, the more food there is. Detention camps are built to contain the looters. There is no fuel or manpower to dispose of the dead. Five to six weeks after the attack and the Bassies exodus to the countryside to find food. Ruth makes her way across the wastes, where she meets Jimmy's mate, and they manage to find food in the form of a dead sheep, but this is no barbecue lamb kebab. Ruth goes on and eventually finds shelter in a barn, where she gives birth, but this is far from a nativity scene. We jump ten years into the future and the remnants of mankind are trying to live. Ruth's daughter is trying to wake her, ready for the day's work, but Ruth has died. Only able to talk in a primitive broken English, 
Ruth's daughter tries to fend for herself before joining up with other young scavengers. She becomes pregnant and we head towards the inevitable end. So that was Fred. Do I like this film? Like is a difficult word to use here. Have I seen this film more than once? Yes. Do I own this film? Yes, I've owned two copies over the years. Would I sit down on a Saturday night with the family in our pyjamas and watch this? Absolutely not. Should you watch it? Yes, it's a brilliant piece of television history that wouldn't get made in this day and age. And if it did, it'd be watered down, probably called Bangy McBombface. Let me be straight with you. I've tried to keep this as light and as jovial as possible, but Fred's is a hard watch. From the start, dread and hopelessness seep off the screen like Sadako from the ring. It never lets up, right to the agonising last moments. I'm not going to rate this one. You can do that for yourself. Thank you for listening. I've been Dave. Please like and subscribe. And remember, look after one another and yourself. You're all beautiful.